Hot off the press, it's WordPress 5.5. We're gonna check out the new features in this tutorial and you might be deleting some plugins because a lot of the features that have been added used to be done by plugins that you now no longer need. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you have not done so yet, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get into this one. If you log into your WordPress site today, tomorrow, next week, or whenever, you'll be greeted with a notification to update to WordPress 5.5. And in case there weren't enough game changers in version 5.4, 5.5, appears to continue that trend. And what I like about it is it's decreasing our reliance on plugins. For example, it says here, lazy loading is now built in to WordPress. And it does lazy loading on desktop and on mobile, and it prevents files that don't need to be loaded from being loaded on mobile, which saves readers money on data and helps preserve battery life and makes your site load faster. Lazy loading, in case you don't know what that is, that is when images below the screen, if you look at my screen right now, this is the visible area of this website, and if there's an image below that area, it won't be loaded until I scroll down. So if I scroll down, there's an image somewhere, this is a video, but say, those are all videos, if there's an image, it wouldn't be loaded until I scroll down. That's what lazy loading means. And my last thoughts on lazy loading, they're plugins that I use and recommend, like ShortPixel and WP Rocket, which have lazy loading built in, I can now turn those features off in those plugins. Those plugins do a lot more than just lazy loading, so I still wanna keep them, but I don't have to do the lazy loading component in those plugins. There are also dedicated lazy loading plugins, which if this option works well in WordPress by default, those plugins are toast. Nobody's gonna need them anymore. That's unfortunate for those developers, but it is a progression in the right direction, I think, because WordPress has to compete with website builders like Wix, and I'm sure you've seen ads for it, it's on every single video on YouTube, it seems like, or maybe they're just targeting me specifically, I don't know, but I see their ads all the time. And they have all these things built right into their website. So you don't have to get a plugin to lazy load, it's built right in. The next feature is another example, something that will be built into a builder like Wix, that's XML sitemaps. Those are not built into WordPress until this update that was just released. So now we have XML sitemaps right in WordPress. Fantastic. Don't have to use Yoast for that or Rank Math or the dedicated XML sitemap plugins, which had some critical vulnerabilities. It's built right into the default WordPress, which is awesome. Unfortunately, some more plugins will bite the dust, but still step in the right direction. There's another feature in WordPress 5.5. That's the ability to enable auto update of plugins and themes. And just like the other two, there are plugins that have been created by developers that do just this. They allow you to set which plugins and themes should be auto updated. Those plugins are now toast. And over the years, I've made videos for all these things. I've made videos for lazy loading. I've made videos for XML sitemaps. I've made videos for auto-updating plugins and themes. And those all need to be updated because now those plugins are not required anymore, which again, I think is a step in the right direction. And if you have premium plugins and themes that do not update via the WordPress dashboard, you can upload zip files for the updates. You no longer have to manually upload the zip file and zip it on your server and replace the folder of the theme and the plugin you can upload the zip files right in the WP dashboard and it will know to which plugins those are for and to update those, which is pretty awesome. There's more updates to Gutenberg. I'll show you these in detail, what they actually are inside Gutenberg. So we'll come back to this. There's new updates to accessibility. These ones allow you to copy links in media screen. So for example, if I go to my media library, this was always a really annoying thing in the past now, click on edit. We don't have this copy URL button right here. You used to have to click in here, select it all or auto select sometimes and make sure you have it all and then copy it like this. Now it's just one little button. Just making things a little bit easier, a little bit more smooth to make our lives a little bit better. And then for developers, we have these things, service side register blocks in the REST API, dash icons, defining environments, passing data to template files. If you're a developer, you can geek out on this. There's also a post for the WordPress documentation. I'll link to this in the description down below so you can go and check it out. This basically goes over everything in the update. And there's also another post that is the specific release post for this for 5.5. I'll link to that as well. And now the blocks. So we have new things, block patterns, inline image editing, and new block directory, and so much more. We're getting so much more as well. So if I go to posts and add new, if I click on the plus icon up here and then click on the patterns tab, we see what they're calling patterns, which are essentially section templates. If you're used to page builders, this would be a template for a section. So you just click on one of these 
let's click on, let's see, this one. There aren't too many, there was like 10 of them in there, but there's more coming, obviously, they just, they just released this. So here's our block, our section template added right here. I can click these images, easily replace the image. Let's put a different one in from the media library. Let's put a line in there. And there's our new image. We can also round the corners with just a click. But there's also one thing as well that didn't work on this image. Let's find a bigger one. Let's find a big image. Just like Brizzy does. I think this is a big image. Maybe it has to be a specific background section. Let me change or let me add the, the blocks. I'm still experimenting with blocks, as you can tell. Or as block patterns, I mean. Um, let's do it on this one. So we add an image that's large, like these people. And on the right hand side, you can move this dot so you can position the image more specifically. This one is not wide, it's this tall. And so it can re be repositioned up and down. And at the moment, the way this is laid out, this image is taller and is wide. So it can be repositioned up and down. And if I increase this number here, let's just make this 500. So it's 500 tall. Now I can go left and right because it keeps the aspect ratio. So as you increase the size, you may be able to adjust the image differently depending on what the size is on the actual page. This is an option that Brizzy allows you to do by dragging and dropping a little circle to reposition the image, how it makes the most sense for your layout. This is something I've only seen in Brizzy. There might be other page builders that have it. If there are, let me know in the comments down below. But I've only seen this implemented in Brizzy, and now it's in Gutenberg. I never expected Gutenberg to really be a trailblazer, but it might be. The, the 5.4 release was like a week and a half ago, and now we have 5.5. And 5.5 is adding a lot of great new features. And one last thing, you can choose to fix the background, i.e. parallax. Built right into Gutenberg now. Pretty fantastic. Another thing we have now is inline image editing. So we have an image already in place, and you can choose to edit it. You can crop it. You can rotate it. You can do it right inside your layout so you can see how it will look on the page. And then click Apply, and it will apply your changes. This is something you could previously do in the media library. So if I go to Replace, go to the media library, select any image, we can choose edit image and now we can edit things in here but that was like four clicks to get here and who has time to do four clicks especially if you have multiple images to do this on now we can do it right in line in the gutenberg editor another new feature when we preview we can choose which device to preview it in desktop tablet or mobile and where the preview happens is right here in the editor so right now it's on desktop if i choose tablet we see we have this larger gray border which is the outside outside of the canvas outside of the viewing area of the tablet and the white background is the actual site on a tablet. And then for mobile as well, shrinks it down again. And we preview it right here. If you choose any of these and click on preview a new tab, that has no effect on the preview in a new tab. This is just like the old option that we had before. So if we preview in a new tab, like I said, we see the desktop version. You can shrink it down and view it on a phone and on a tablet as well here. But the viewing options that we choose here are reflected inside of the editor, not on the preview new tab link. And I think all these features are welcome for a lot of people because we're getting closer to being able to work things like a page builder. Still a long ways to go, we're getting closer. And page builders tend to be very bloated. They have a lot of extra code required to build the pages. But I think that Gutenberg, it's not like the WordPress team can work miracles. You still have to have code. And so as Gutenberg gets closer to being a page builder, I fear the pages will be just as bloated because features take code. There's no way around it. You want your website to do cool stuff, it requires code to do that. And so the more features Gutenberg adds, I think the more bloated Gutenberg will become. So all the people who are going back to Gutenberg because it's lighter, skinnier, faster than page builders might find that it's actually not. And there's even more to this release. Check it out on this page here, have a read through and play around with it and see what you can use and what you can't use and maybe change up your workflow. But all in all, I think these updates are a progression in the right direction because I think WordPress needs to keep pace and possibly catch up some ground with places like Wix, where it is truly a drag and drop builder that's really easy to use. The big advantage WordPress has is it's infinitely customizable, but with that, it becomes harder to use because you can do so many things and WordPress doesn't necessarily guide you in one direction. You have ultimate flexibility 
And in doing so, there is more to learn than a platform like Wix, which just does one thing and does it really well. So it's a fine balance the WordPress team has to accommodate because we don't want to lose that flexibility to do whatever we want, but we also want to be able to do things that we do often easily. So it's a hard balance, but I, I think they're working in the right direction. And next up is watching this video right here, where I show you the top 10 security mistakes that I see over and over and over again in WordPress. Make sure you watch that and make sure you're not doing any of these mistakes because it could lead to your site being hacked. That's not something you want. Also make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn All, Pass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.